Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pacharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nesta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter Number 12, The Killing of the Demon Agasura, text number, beginning text number 40. Shri Sutta Uvacha, Itam Dvija Yadava Deva Tata, Shrudva Swaratus, Shrutva Swaratush Charitam Vichitram Paprachya Bhuyopi Tad Eva Punyam Vayasakim Yan Nigrihita Cheta Shri Sukha Sutta Uvacha Itam Dvija Yada Dai Itam Dvija Yadava Dai Vadata Shridva Swaratus Charitam Vichitram Papracha buyo pitad eva punyam Vayasa kim yan negrihita teta Shri Sutta Uvacha Itam dvija yadada Itam Dvija Yadava Devadatha Shridva Swaratus Charitam Vichitram Prapracha Bhuyo Pitad Eva Punyam Vayasa Kimyan Negrihita Cheta
idam dvijaya dava deva data shrutva svacatus charitam chatritram papracha buyo pita deva punyam Vayasa kimyan nigrihita che Shri Sutta Uvacha Shri Sutta Goswami spoke to the assembled saints at Naimisharanya. Itam in this way Dvija O learned Brahmanas Yadava Deva Data Maharaj Parikshit or Maharaj Yudhisthira, who was protected by Yada, Yadava Deva Krishna. Shrutva, hearing Swaratu of Krishna, who was his saviour within the womb of his mother Uttara. Charitram, the activities, Vichitram, all wonderful, Papracha, inquired, Buya Api, even again, Tat Eva, such activities, punyam, which are always full of pious activities. Shrimvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. To hear about Krishna is always pious. Vayasakim. And to Sukadeva Goswami, yet because Nigrihita Chaita Maharaj Parikshit had already become steady in hearing about Krishna. Translation Sri Sutta Goswami said, O learned saints, the childhood pastimes of Sri Krishna are very wonderful. Maharaj Parikshit, after hearing about these pastimes of Krishna, who had saved him in the womb of his mother, became steady in his mind and again inquired from Sukadeva Goswami to hear about those pious activities. There's no purport. We'll go on to text 41. Maharaj Parikshit inquired, O great sage, how could things done in the past have been described as being done at the present? Lord Sri Krishna performed his pastime of killing Agasura during his Komar age. How then during his Poganda age could the boys have described this incident? as having happened recently. Again, there's no purport. We'll read the next verse, text number 42. O greatest yogi, my spiritual master, kindly describe why this happened. I am very much curious to know about it. I think that it was nothing but another illusion due to Krishna. Purport, Krishna has many potencies, parashya shaktir vividaiva shruyate. The description of Agasura was disclosed after one year. Some act of Krishna's potency must have been involved. Therefore, Maharaj Parikshit was very curious to know about this and he requested Sukadeva Goswami to explain it. Text 43, O oh my Lord, my spiritual master, although we are the lowest of Kshatriyas, 
we are glorified and benefited because we have this opportunity of always hearing from you the nectar of the pious activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. The pious activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are very confidential. It is not ordinarily possible to hear such activities unless one is very, very fortunate. Parikshit Maharaj placed himself as Shatra Bandava, which means the lowest of the Kshatriyas. The qualities of the Kshatriyas are described in Bhagavad Gita, and although the general quality of the Kshatriya is Ishwara Bhav, the tendency to rule, a Kshatriya is not supposed to rule over a Brahmana. Thus Maharaj Parikshit regretted that he had wanted to rule over the Brahmanas and had therefore been cursed. He considers himself the lowest of the Kshatriyas. Dhanam Ishwara bhava cha, Bhavas Cha Shatram Karmaswa Bhava Jam. There was no doubt that Maharaj Parikshit had the good qualities of a Kshatriya. But as a devotee, he presented himself with submissiveness and humility as the lowest of the Kshatriyas, remembering his act of wrapping a Namaha Vancha Kaupa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavani Bio Vaishna Vibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa De Gor Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So we're hearing the nectar of Lord Krishna's pastimes. Maharaj Parikshit has been drinking this nectar from the mouth of his spiritual master. And he is feeling eager to hear more of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. He is describing, however, his own remorse or his own regret that he is the lowest of the Kshatriyas because he is conscious that just before hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, he had committed some offense against the Brahmana by placing the dead snake around his neck. Maharaj Parikshit had been on some kind of hunting expedition, because as a Kshatriya, it's their duty to be able to administer violence. Sometimes they have to deal with so many people, just like Maharaj Parikshit confronted the personality of Kali. 
So he was ready to kill him. So it's the duty of the Kshatriya that they have to be, as described in the qualities of the Kshatriya, that they have to be uh, heroic, right? They have to, they're resourceful in battle and they're full of courage. And they have this Ishwara Bhav. Of course, you can see this Ishwara Bhav can become a little bit of a problem. Just like for Maharaj Pariksit, because he did have that Ishwara Bhav, therefore when he went to the Brahmana's ashram and the Brahmana, Brahmana was engaged in meditation, the Brahmana was sitting in samadhi in trance, so he did not receive Maharaj Pariksit. And Maharaj Pariksit somehow, although it was unusual for him, it was not customary for him to behave like that, but he felt a little bit insulted and he took the dead snake and put it round the neck of the sage. And this led to him being cursed. But of course that's glorious because his cursing allowed for the appearance of Sukadeva Goswami and the speaking of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So ultimately it was all the plan of the Lord that the Lord arranged all of this. He arranged it Sukadeva Goswami could speak Srimad Bhagavatam and by Maharaj Pariksit hearing Srimad Bhagavatam he could prepare himself to go back to Godhead and even before the snake bird came and bit him Maharaj Pariksit had already achieved samadhi and he'd already liberated himself from this material world. So Maharaj Pariksit is uh, conscious of that he made some kind of offense against the say He knew that he'd done a, something wrong there and considers himself to be low, uh, the lowest of the Kshatriyas. But at the same time, he also remembers that he got the name Parikshit because the Lord appeared in his womb, in the, in the womb of the mother, Uttara. Uttara, the wife of Abhimanu and of Uttara was, had conceived the child before the death of Abhimanu in the battle of Kurukshetra. And at one point, uh, Ashwatthama had tried to destroy all the Yadu dynasty, all the heirs to the Yadu dynasty, to the throne and so on. And Ashwatthama threw the Brahmastra weapon at the child in the womb of Uttara. And of course, at that time, Uttara came running to Lord Krishna. Pahi Pahi Mahayogin Deva Deva Jagatpate. Right? Uttara is calling out to Lord Krishna that, oh, great yogi, great sage, Lord of Lord, master of everyone, please protect this child in my womb. Let the weapon burn me, but please protect the child. Don't let the child be destroyed. Mother's nature is like that, right? Mother's nature, they will sacrifice their life for their child. There are many instances like that. Sometimes a child may be in a, in a fire or something. The mother will do everything they can to save the child. The mother is ready to sacrifice their life for the child. So Uttara also was like that. She was ready. Let the Brahmastra weapon burn me. I'm not worried about myself, but I don't want the child to die. And so of course Maharaj Parikshit was saved because the Lord appeared in the womb. So Parikshit means the examiner. And it also another name of Parikshit is Vishnu Ratha, one who is protected by Lord Vishnu. Because when Parikshit was within the womb, he saw the Lord. When the Brahmastra weapon came, the Lord was there circul uh, circling, circling around the, the child in the womb and protecting him from the blazing heat of the Brahmastra weapon. Some commentators, they say actually the body was destroyed and Krishna gave another body to replace it. Whatever happened, the Lord protected the child, the child was born. And when, the, when Parikshit took birth, then the custom is they want to understand the qualities of the child. 
So we have a nice chapter on that in the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. We hear about the, how the astrologers came and they did their charts and calculations and they saw the qualities of Maharaj Parikshit. Because Parikshit is going to be the heir to the throne. He has to take over after Yudhisthira. And they want to make sure that he has the right qualities. They don't want another Venu, right? They already had enough problems when Venu came. Brahmanas had to come and curse him. So with the very birth of the child, the Brahmanas came and they studied all the different features of the child and the astrological uh, time of his birth. And they predicted all the wonderful qualities of this child, how he would be very noble in character and very perfect in behavior. Everything would be, would be exemplary. He'd be a wonderful personality to lead the whole kingdom, to inspire all the citizens in their God consciousness. So Maharaj Parikshit's uh, from his very birth, he had all these kind of qualities. And then after Lord Krishna departed from the world, then the Pandavas, with instruction from Narada Muni, they also departed. And they put Parikshit on the throne. And he had to rule. And he did. He ruled very well. And he severely chastised, as I told, the personality of Kali. He wouldn't let anybody go against the principles of religion. Although the Kali Yuga was supposed to begin from the time of the battle of Kurukshetra, because Lord Krishna was still present on the planet, it could not take effect. But then after Lord Krishna departed, then Maharaj Parikshit ruled. And because Maharaj Parikshit was such an exemplary character that the personality of Kali also could not infiltrate into the kingdom. Although Maharaj Parikshit did give some concessions to the personality of Kali, that he could reside wherever there is a hoarding of gold. Because where there is a hoarding of gold, then these irreligious activities will also gradually appear. So in this way, Maharaj Parikshit is glorified. Uh, we, we read this morning how Sutta Goswami was saying that Maharaj Parikshit was taking great pleasure in hearing the pastimes of the Lord because naturally he'd been protected by the Lord and he'd seen the Lord as a child in the womb before birth. He'd seen the, so he has this intimate relationship Parikshit, the examiner, he's always looking, where is that personality? And here he is, before his departure from the world, he's hearing all the glories of the Lord from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami. So naturally, the atmosphere is very intense. You know, it must, you just imagine the atmosphere, what it must be like. Somebody's going to leave the world just like we knew when Prabhupada was in his room in Vrindavan, you know, and we were chanting there and we we're preparing. We, we didn't, it's, it's very, very intense, special situation. So 5,000 years ago, Parikshit comes and he's ready. He's given up the kingdom and he's come to just sit and to prepare for death. So he's so fortunate that the Lord arranges Sukadeva Goswami to come to speak to him, to guide him in his preparation. And for seven days, he's not drinking or eating or sleeping. He's simply hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. He is absorbed. It's very intense. And so many other great sages have also come. Just like in Vrindavan, when Prabhupada was there, so many great devotees also came. 
So many of the leaders, Prabhupada said, call, out, call everybody to come. So many people came. And uh, the atmosphere is very intense. So Maharaj Parikshit is inspired hearing his spiritual master tell him the pastimes of Krishna. These pastimes of Krishna, of course, they are uh, all about pious, the most pious activities. It's mentioned here in the purport, right? The, it's Tad uh, Eva Punyam. Here, I want to hear the activities again, which are always full of pious activities. And then Prabhupada quotes that verse from this first canto, second chapter, Srinvatam Swakata Krishna, that uh, Lord Krishna, the super soul within the hearts of all living entities, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment for, from those who relish his message which is in itself virtuous by proper hearing and chanting. Uh, Sri Krishna, the super soul, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment. So that's the effect of uh, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Punya Shravana Kirtanam. Ridyanta Stohiya Bhadrani Vudunoti Suritsatam. It's a, uh, just simply hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam creates piety in people. Even though people may be sinful, but if they sit, if they just hear this message of Srimad Bhagavatam, then because it's a literary incarnation of the Lord, it's none different from the Lord. And we've been hearing how Agasura could get liberated just simply by that little contact with the Lord. And we heard how the other demons who also contacted the Lord, how they were also liberated, how Putana was liberated. And Bakasura, he must have got Sayuja Mukti, like that. So these different demons, they all got so much purification coming into contact with the Lord. So, People who contact Srimad Bhagavatam, they're also contacting the Lord. And they're also getting that same opportunity to become liberated. Right, Prabhupada says that studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. As we go on studying this nectar of the pastimes of Krishna. So then... Maharaj Parikshit inquired uh, about how he wanted to understand why it took one year before the cowherd boys talked about this Agasura demon, about Krishna killing the Agasura. What happened? How did it take one year? Of course, we're going to hear about Lord Brahma and how Lord Brahma stole away everyone. So Lord Brahma had come and he'd been witnessing how Krishna and the cowherd boys were performing these wonderful pastimes. And Lord Brahma had become a bit curious to understand all of these things about Lord Krishna. How is it this, this, this Krishna, he is the, the supreme personality of Godhead. How is it possible he can be Swayam Bhagavan? So Maharaj Parikshit wants to know about why it took so long. So he asked his spiritual master. He accepts Sukadev Goswami as his spiritual master. That if you, uh, he said, I am very much curious to know about it. I think it was nothing but another illusion due to Krishna. An illusion due to Krishna. The word in Sanskrit is Maya, Krishna's Maya. But Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, in his commentary, he said, there's only one maya can affect these devotees because they're all pure devotees. So the only maya is yoga maya. 
it's not any other maya. It's just simply Krishna's yoga maya, which is influencing all these pastimes. Because all the cowherd boys, we heard in the pre earlier in this chapter, how all these cowherd boys had performed pious activities over many lifetimes. And so they were able to enjoy these pastimes with Lord Krishna. Krita punya punya. Right? They had, what are these pious activities which they did? They're simply, they performed acts which were pleasing to Lord Krishna. It must have been that they did activities which were very pleasing to Lord Krishna. And therefore Lord Krishna brought them into his pastimes. He selects who he wants to enjoy these pastimes with. So, Maharaj Parikshit is addressing Sukadeva Goswami, Oh my Lord, my spiritual master. And he's, and he's then Parikshit is so humble. Although we are the lowest of Kshatriyas, we are... So, this, this humility is one of the important qualifications of the devotee. The devotees are, must feel this sense of humility. Just like Krishna does Kaviraj Goswami writes in his Chaitanya Charitamrita, Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista Purusheta Purusheta Kitohaiti Munishe Papista. He's saying that I am more sinful than Jaghai and Madhai. Anyone who hears my name, they lose their pious activities. And anyone who utters my name, they become sinful. Uh, uh, and uh, then uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj goes on to say, he said, who, who else but the most merciful Lord Nityananda could deliver such a fallen soul as myself? And so this is the humility of such great devotee. And similarly, we have also Vrindavan Das Thakur describing himself as the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. Although he is the Vyasa Dev of Chaitanya Lila, but he describes himself as being the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. And then you've got Naratam Das Thakur saying, we, we're singing every morning, uh, that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are Patita Pavana, I am Patita, I'm very fallen, so you please deliver me first. So like that, all the, these devotees, they teach us the importance of humility, this feeling of being totally unworthy and unqualified to taste this nectar and considering ourselves to be very, very fortunate. That is uh, the point, right? That we're so fortunate that we have this opportunity. Actually, we have no qualification. There's no qualification but that, that we have to make us worthy of it. It's just simply our good fortune. Somehow, spiritual master is very fortunate that he's allowing us to hear all of these confidential topics. These pastimes of Krishna are certainly very confidential. And Prabhupada explains in the purport, and we see also from Maharaj Parikshit how he's approaching Sukadeva Goswami, that, you know, please tell me about this, that the business of the spiritual master is to enlighten the disciple about these confidential topics. We have to hear them from the spiritual teacher. Uh, this is the loving relationship between devotees. 
right? Dadati parati grinati guyam makyati pricchati bhongte bojayate chaiva tadvinam pritilakshanam. There are six kinds of loving exchanges, offering gifts and accepting charitable gifts, offering foodstuffs and accepting the prasadam, and inquiring confidentially and revealing one's mind in confidence. So here we have Sukadeva Goswami revealing to Maharaj Parikshit this confidential subject matter of Lord Krishna's pastimes. This, of course, tenth canto, this is the, the smiling face of the Lord. Very, very special topics. We were so fortunate that Srila Prabhupada compiled the Krishna book just to allow us to hear all of these confidential topics. Prabhupada was not sure how long he would remain in the world. Therefore, very early on in the movement, he compiled the Krishna book. And uh, he compiled it in such a manner that even neophytes, even people who have no knowledge at all, could greatly benefit from the book from hearing the pastimes of Krishna. It is described in the beginning of the tenth canto Nivritta Tarsher Upagiyamanach Bavoshadach Chotra Mano Biramat. Yet Uttama Sloka, like, like that. It's, it's a, a beautiful verse in the beginning of the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam where it describes that. These topics of Lord Krishna are the actual medicine, bhavoshadi, the oshada, the medicine for, materi for curing the disease of material existence. If we hear the topics of Lord Krishna, then we can become, we can lose our attraction for material life. That is the effect of properly hearing the topics of Krishna, that we become nivritta tarsher. We have no longer any attraction to enjoy the material world because there's so much pleasure in hearing the topics of Krishna. So Maharaj Parikshit is certainly taking this opportunity to relish hearing. And Sukadeva Goswami He's also getting pleasure in speaking. So much so that we hear in the final verse of this chapter, it said, Sukadeva Goswami externally lost contact with the actions of his senses. Just like Srila Prabhupada in uh, Gorakhpur, right? Prabhupada also had similar experience. Externally he lost contact with his senses and due to absorption, intense absorption in topics of Lord Krishna. So commentator Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes, he said that at this point seeing Sukadeva Goswami lose contact with his mind and senses, Vyasadev and Narada Muni are sitting there so they loudly chant the holy name. They begin kirtan. Hare Krishna. Hare Ram. Right. We don't have much opportunity to see these kinds of <laughs> transcendental displays of symptoms. But if we do see it, we should respond similarly to Vyas and Narada Muni, loudly chant the holy name and bring the devotee back to external consciousness so that they can continue speaking the glories of the Lord. Topics of Lord Krishna. This is uh, the business of devotees to discuss the topics of Krishna. And this Srimad Bhagavatam, this is the 
fruit of all of the past all the all of the Vedas, all right? Nigamakopa Tarargal. This is the ripened fruit. And the nature of this fruit is it's th thoroughly relishable and easily digestible. We don't get mangoes like that today. Now is the mango season. We notice the mangoes, you know, big stones and thick skins with a little bit of pulp. But the Srimad Bhagavatam is the best of all fruits. Thoroughly relishable, easily digestible. Because it's come from the mouth of Shukadeva Goswami. And we are also getting it, not directly from Shukadev, but Sutta Goswami. And Sutta Goswami speaking before how many thousands of sages? Something like 88,000 sages. Uh, last year I went to Naimasharanya <laughs> to see the place. They mentioned there about how many thousands of sages, I can't remember the exact figure, but it was several thousands, many thousands, they were all, they'd all come. And Sukadeva Goswami is speaking there. And at the head of all the sages, you have this, it's mentioned here in this last verse, text 44, that there is Bhagavat Uttama Uttamam, Bhagavat Uttama Uttam, the greatest of the greatest of devotees. The, the great saintly person, greatest of all devotees, Shonaka. Shonaka Rishi, he's the head of all the sages, right? So Sutta Goswami was addressing him like that. He was glorifying him. So you see the wonderful rapport between the speaker and the hearer between the speaker, Sukadeva Goswami speaking, but he's speaking to his guru and to his father and to his father's guru. <laughs> you know, they're all there. But, you know, there's this wonderful relationship that everybody's taking pleasure in hearing the topics of Krishna. So like this, we want to cultivate Krishna consciousness taking pleasure in hearing. Why don't we have taste? Why don't we have pleasure for hearing? Because we're so disturbed by our anarthas, by all the material desires in our mind and senses. Therefore, the, the how to overcome this? By service. Shushushro Shradhanashya Vasudev Kitaruchi Shanmahatsevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishevana. By serving those devotees who are free of sin, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the message of Vyasadeva. So, this is important for all of us that if we're not developing that ecstasy, that taste, that if we're not relishing hearing, we have to do more service. We have to absorb ourselves in serving Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's mission. And that will purify us so that we can have better appreciation for these transcendental topics. Hare Krishna. Any questions, comments from our learned audience? Yes. Yes, Janani Vas Prabhu. It's a little bit unusual, Srila Prabhupada, in, in the, uh, in the uh, translation. He's, uh, Which text? Which translation? Ponyam. Ponyam is, yeah, Ponyam, text 40. Ponyam, always full of pious activities. And then he recites his other verse, Srimbatam Swakata Krishna, Ponya Shravana Kirtana. So it's, it's 
put this extra little verse in the translation. You get the more flavor from it, get more meaning from it. With, uh, and emphasize uh, punya. Chanting the holy names. Famous purple propots chanted when he yeah. went to America on the Jaladuta. He, was, he wrote that song in it. That verse in his song from Bhagavatam. Anyway, he doesn't often do that, does he? I've just, just struck me. Put another verse in there to explain the, the, the meaning of punyam. And yeah, it, it's interesting how Prabhupada. You know, in the word meaning, it's almost like he starts giving another lecture. He's preparing to give up another class of something, you know. And then he comes across this one word and he, 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 doesn't, he puts a meaning and then he puts a, another verse in there. And, you know, <laughs> it's like he's, uh, he's, these purports, they're really his, his ecstasy, you know. It's, it's worth noting, Maharaj, that when we quote that Kritya Punya Punja, or in here it's talking about the pious activities, that those aren't the mundane piety of Satvagun or Dharma, but it's the devotional service of the Lord. You don't become an eternal Rajvasi friend of the Lord simply by Dharma or by you know, karma, piety but by rendering devotional service, pure devotional service, that kind of punya is what's being referred to in the verse you referred to and in this verse also. Yes, definitely. It's only by devotional service that we earn the merit to actually take part in Krishna's pastimes. And you have to render very confidential service to Krishna to achieve that kind of position. Therefore, in the translation Prabhupada puts, pious, perform pious activities over many lifetimes. So, uh, of course, this, the piety is bhakti unmuli sukriti, that they perform devotional service, activities which had to be very, very pleasing to Lord Krishna. Therefore, they became worthy to take part in Krishna's pastimes. These cowherd boys are enjoying braja bhakti, right? Pastimes in Vrindavan. Aga, he got to Vaikuntha. But the cowherd boys, they're very special. Putana. You know, her, she doesn't have much bhakti. She got to be a nurse, Krishna's nurse, but she doesn't get the same position like Mother Yashoda. She can't be like Mother Yashoda. She can never ever come to that level. Mother Yashoda's loving connection with Krishna. What, one other point. He's addressing him as his spiritual master. And sometimes in our movement, we put a lot of emphasis on Diksha Guru. When we hear spiritual master, we automatically think Diksha Guru. But uh, uh, Shonaka, before beginning his answering the questions, he offers praise to and respects to Shukadev Goswami. He's not a Diksha disciple of Shukadev Goswami, nor is Pariksha a Diksha disciple of Shukadeva Goswami, they're Siksha disciples. They're hearing the nectar being given to them. So I just, I, I mention this because I listened to a seminar yesterday where some devotee was emphasizing that aspect without. Sukadeva Goswami is just giving Shiksha to Maharaj Pariksit. That's, that, that's how it comes down. There was no. Well, the, there was no formal initiation. See, that's what we usually think of as the diksha. It's the 
yajna, the name, <laughs> and the vows. But Jiva Goswami defines diksha as the destruction of one's sins and the giving of transcendental right. knowledge. Yeah. So he's receiving the diksha through the siksha. He's a siksha guru, but he's getting transcendental enlightenment, and certainly whatever, you know, Preeksha had no sins, but if he had, they were all destroyed. So I'm just I, making mention for balance for our society. We need to understand this important point that Siksha and Diksha, they're both representatives of Krishna and, and equally worshipable. They're both? Are, are both giving, they are both representing Krishna. And according to Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they're both equally worshipable. Oh, definitely. Both equally worshipable, definitely. Yeah person giving shiksha, person giving diksha. We do have that problem within the society that we tend to, we tend to put more importance on the diksha. But it's the shiksha which is even more important. We need to get shiksha. And so the shiksha and diksha are equal. And the qualification to give shiksha and to dik could, could give diksha are the same. Because their positions are the same, so their qualification is the same. So we need more people to give diksha. Then gradually that misunderstanding can be rectified. When we have more people initiating, then there will be less emphasis on the diksha guru. But guru bhakti whether shiksha or diksha is very good, but it's encouraged. Not that there's any, guru bhakti is very important. But the guru bhakti, the point of the guru bhakti should be given to the people giving shiksha also. We can see them like, because they're giving us that transcendental knowledge. They're destroying the sins. Some some uh, some diksha guru is emphasizing that only diksha guru is taking away the karma of the disciples. That, but here we can hear that even by instructing a shiksha disciple some transcendental knowledge, that also can destroy your sinful reactions. That means your sinful karma is also taken away by the shiksha guru. How can we understand this? Yes, there's. Banu Swami also had a seminar on this and he was presenting how there are several people involved in taking away the karma of the person. So, of course, we do see at the time of initiation, Diksha Guru becomes responsible for the karma. But that will depend a lot on the attitude of the disciple, how much the disciple is actually surrendering and committing themselves to the service of the Diksha Guru. It's important. But we see other people also take karma, like the king in a kingdom, he becomes responsible, one-sixth of the karma. Husband and wives, their karmas are interrelated. The wife enjoys the pious activities of the husband. And so, karma is a very complex thing. And we're hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. By hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, then it can also destroy sins. So there are many different factors to be considered in dealing with karma. It's not just only one person, Diksha Guru, takes all the karma.
Mm. Yeah, there are different manifestations of Krishna. So we have to see Krishna in these <laughs> different personalities. One question from the Chinese devotees. Jayanti Devi Dasi obeisances to Gurudev. My family members, sometimes they help me to practice Krishna consciousness, but sometimes they use their words to deny me, and they are against my principles. What shall I do? You should continue to practice, and at the same time, you should be patient with your family members and try to keep good relationships with them. Don't try, I, I wouldn't try to push them or preach too much to them. Just try to show a good example yourself. Be clean, be happy, be satisfied, work hard, be peaceful, and just show to your family members that practicing Krishna consciousness has been good for you and it's helped you and it's given you a lot of benefit. Just if they can see that it's really not doing you any harm, then that will be the best thing you can do. That will help them to accept Krishna consciousness. But if you try to preach to them and if you go on about their habits and complaining about them, then that's not going to be very good. You're going to get problems, they will start to argue and they'll complain. So you have to be a little tolerant. Your karma is that you're in that family and your family members are not devotee. This is your karma. At the same time, you've been fortunate that you've come to Krishna consciousness. So you have to be tolerant about the family members and relatives. At the same time, be, patient, be determined to continue your practice and be faithful. Keep Krishna in your heart. Be more confidential about your practice. Don't make a show of doing your practice in their presence. Okay? Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Janani Vas Prabhu, what, is, what should we do with, our, with the japa beads of somebody who leaves a body, somebody who's initiated and they have japa beads? What, what do we use?